That was so sweet. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Blue Talk. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Columbia University, for having me. So I was sitting several years ago in a therapist's office in West L.A., and she didn't have a degree, but nobody in L.A. does for therapy or life coaching, not even me. So I was sitting in her office with my then-husband, and everything in her office was feng shui. She had the fountain by the door, the Palo Santo in the sage was burning, she was cooking bone broth in the kitchen. Everything was so peaceful, except the fact that my ex-husband and I couldn't stop fighting in her office. So she said, stop, let's just stop the fighting. She looked me dead in the eye, and she said, Rebecca, do you want to be married? And a pause came through my body. I stopped, and it wasn't even anything that I thought I would ever say because I was so entrenched in being right with this guy. And I said, I want a life of ease, grace, and spiritual dignity. So, no, I no longer want to be married because obviously fighting like that is not a life of ease, grace, and spiritual dignity. So I soon left that marriage, and I went on to look at my life, and I, and I realized, why am I not in ease, grace, and spiritual dignity? I am actually stuck in what I call the isms. So we know alcoholism and workaholism and all these isms, but ism in my teachings stands for I, self, and me. It's being in bondage to your own thinking, to your own outdated paradigms. So instead of being self-obsessed and caught in my isms, I learned how to care more about other people. I learned that it's more important to feel good from the inside and be happy and fulfilled than outside validation. So these are the isms that I got to let go of to find happiness. The first ism is never enough ism. It never was enough for me. Especially for some reason, Valentine's Day used to be a big never enough ism trigger for me. So if my ex-husband took me to dinner, why didn't he get me a card? If he got me a card, why didn't he get me chocolates? If he got me chocolates, why didn't he get me jewelry? And I was focused out on other people to fulfill me. And it just never worked because when you have never enoughism, there's just never enough. It could be an award, an accolade. It could be an Oscar, an Emmy, whatever it is. I'm from L.A. If you get an Oscar, well, you're only as good as your last movie. Never enoughism. The next ism that I suffered from was over there-ism. And we've talked a lot about that today, like the donkey chasing the carrot. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you affirmations, and I'm going to actually, I forgot, this is the best part, make you repeat the affirmations so you remember them. So the antidote to these isms is to turn them around into affirmations. So the opposite of never enough-ism is I am enough, I have enough, I am willing to set myself free. So repeat after me, I am enough. I have enough, I am willing to set myself free. Ha! <sighs> Take a breath. Doesn't it feel good to be free? Over there-ism. So over there-ism is the donkey chasing the carrot. And we are trained in this culture to have over there-ism. I'll be happy when I graduate high school. And then I'll be happy when I graduate college. And then I'll be happy when I get my first job. And then I'll be happy when I get married. And then I'll be happy when I have kids. And then I'll be happy when I have a second kid. And then I'll be happy when my kids get into a good high school. And then I'll be happier when my kids get into a good college. And then I'll be happier when my kids get married. And then I'll be happier when I have grandkids. And then I'll be happier when I plan my funeral. And then it's over. So we spend our whole life going my ha putting our happiness over there. I'll be happy when I. 
So instead of putting our happiness over there and looking back at life going, oh my God, it's over and I never got to be happy because I kept putting it over there, the affirmation for that is, I am at home, I have arrived. So repeat after me, I am at home, I have arrived. There is no over there. The only thing that's real is right here, right now. The past is fictional. The future is fictional. They're figments of our own perception. The only moment that we have is this moment right here. So let's stop taking our happiness over here and bring it to right here, right now. The next ism is compare and despair ism. We all do that on social media. Corey just talked about that. You know, people are standing in front of Ferraris and, you know, saying they're going to help you build your mansion and they can't even pay their bills, but nobody knows because it looks like they have a mansion, but they're just driving to the nice side of town and standing in front of someone's mansion saying, look at my house, right? Or they're standing next to somebody's Lamborghini and it's not even their car going, I can help you get one too. We think it's real because it's on social media, but we don't even know what's going on in that person's life. So we compare our insides, our heart, our soul to other people's outsides and we feel like we don't measure up. How many people have ever looked at someone's social media and felt like, wow, I'm not having that vacation. I'm not having that meal. I'm not having that. What's wrong with me, right? There's nothing wrong with you. So the antidote to compare and despairism is I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. So repeat after me. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. You say it. And you are. You have a divinely appointed spiritual journey with unique lessons and milestones, and you're exactly where you're supposed to be on your journey. And guess what? So is that influence on social media that's making you mad. They have their own unique lessons, but everybody's fighting an inner battle, and we have no idea what their inner battle is. That's just the human condition. We all have our inner battles and struggles that we're overcoming, People just don't show them on social media. So if somebody is really showing off on social media, just know that they're a human and they have their own struggles and have compassion. So the next ism that I want to talk about, so we talked about never enoughism, over thereism, compare and despairism. The next ism is if onlyism. So if onlyism is codependency. If you put your happiness on other people's behavior, you're screwed. Because even if you wrestle them to the ground and they do it exactly your way for like five minutes, they're going to go back to doing it their way because people are not interested in being controlled. So I used to waste a lot of energy trying to teach and preach and send people like to seminars and, oh my God, if, if he could only hear the speaker then he'd be a good boyfriend. If he could only read this book, then he'd know how to treat me. If he could only just listen to this YouTube video with me, he's going to change everything about his life. How many people have ever thought, if only this person could do this, then I'd be happy? So if only ism is about trying to control somebody else, and it's about not accepting them for where they are. So the answer to if onlyism is radical acceptance, accepting them head to toe. Now, you either accept someone or you reject them. You can't tolerate someone because if you tolerate someone that's driving you crazy and you have resentful all the time, then I would say just walk away because that is a toxic relationship. And if it's constantly upsetting you, it's no longer serving your highest good and it's okay to walk away. So accept them, warts and all, or reject them, warts and all. Just don't tolerate people, because tolerating people is what makes you crazy. So the opposite of the last one I said, if onlyism, is if they knew better, they would do better. Everyone is just doing the best they can with the knowledge, strength, and awareness that they have. Nobody's going after you by being a neurotic, crazy person. That's just who they are. So everybody think of that person. We all have that person in our head that we are like, if only they would do this, then I'd be happy. 
And repeat after me. Say, if they knew better, they would do better. If they knew better, they would do better. Absolutely. And the final ism is perfectionism. So how many recovering perfectionists are here? So I used to be a perfectionist. I'm a recovering one now. I had to have everything perfect or I couldn't do it. My I's had to be dotted and my T's had to be crossed and my ducks had to be in a row. And if it wasn't going to be perfect, then I wasn't going to do it. And perfectionism slows you down. And guess what? The universe loves speed. Money loves speed. If you're trying to manifest abundance, and I'm an abundance coach, an abundance can be an abundance of love, it can be an abundance of money, it can be an abundance of health. If you want abundance, go faster. The universe loves speed. Do it messy. Don't be scared to do it messy. Be a human. I know one of the other speakers just talked about being vulnerable. When you're messy and you're vulnerable, people fall in love with you. Nobody falls in love with a perfectionist. They're too perfect. How many know someone who looks like everything's perfect? They kind of disgust you, right? They're like, oh, God, I just talked to so-and-so. Everything in her life is perfect. But if somebody's real and somebody's a human and they're vulnerable and they share their heart and they share their pain, you, you fall in love with them a little bit. So the opposite of perfectionism is done is better than perfect. Just get it done. If you want to write a book, write a book. If you want to do a speech, do a speech. We had someone do a speech. It was her first time ever doing a speech in English, but she did it. Done is better than perfect. And what I had to teach myself as a recovering perfectionist is I'm striving for imperfection. If I strive for imperfection, I can hit that bullseye every day, all day. How many people like the idea of striving for imperfection? How many people can do it all day, every day? Imperfection. So the affirmation that is going to heal you from the ism called perfectionism is I am striving for imperfection. I am not a mistake if I make a mistake. Mistakes are actually the stepping stones to success. The more mistakes you make at something, the better you get. So don't be scared of mistakes because there are no mistakes. There are no failures. You either learn or you win. What's wrong with learning? We're all here because we love to learn. That's where at a blue talk, we all want to learn. So let's repeat the affirmation to overcome perfectionism. Repeat after me. I am striving for imperfection. I am not a mistake if I make a mistake. You are perfect, whole, and complete no matter what you do. No, no matter if you make a million mistakes a day, you're just learning faster than other people. I love that you wanted to repeat that. I am flattered. So those are the isms that kept me in a paradigm. So six months ago, I was walking down the aisle. My mother and father-in-law are here, Richard and Vita Press. Thank you so much for coming. And if you recall, I was walking down the aisle and I was crying. I don't know if you guys could see me, but maybe you saw it in pictures. And I was crying. And this was a beautiful wedding to my soulmate in Malibu. And it was at noon on the winter equinox. And we had a shaman in the, in the beach and the sun in the sky. And I was wearing my dream floaty princess dress. And it was very romantic, but that's not why I was crying. I was crying because I knew that the reason I got to that moment, walking down the aisle with my mom in Malibu six months ago, is because I did the journey of finding my own happiness. I had to let go of that old way of thinking. I had to let go of my isms, and I just had to let it all go and just be happy in the moment and just love myself. And I even remember saying to myself, you know what, Rebecca? If I never get married again, if I never fall in love again, I'm going to be happy no matter what, because happiness is a decision. Happiness is letting go of these old ways of thinking, these old isms that were keeping me trapped, that were keeping me 
seeking outside validation constantly. I had to learn that it's better to feel good and to love myself than to look good. That no human, no thing, no house, no car was going to fill my God-sized hole. It was a soul sickness that I had to fill through my own inner work of letting go of the isms. And I was walking down that aisle crying because I had gone through that journey. And I still go through that journey every day of letting go of my isms. And I encourage you guys just to love and accept yourself exactly how you are because you are perfect. Everything is right about you. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. I love and accept you. Will you love and accept you? Thank you.